Kevin Miller joins us. He's the vice president and general manager of Amazon S3. And we're going to discuss the evolution of data lakes. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Dave. Great to uh, be here. Yeah, let's riff on this a little bit. Why is S3 so popular for data lakes? How have data lakes on S3 ch changed and evolved? Well, I think a lot of the core benefits of S3 really play directly into what customers are looking for with when they're building a data lake, right? They're looking for low cost storage, some places they can put shared data sets and have, make it very easy for other teams and businesses to access a set of data, as well as have all the management around it, making knowing that the data is secure, is, is durable, is protected. And so all of the capability that S3 provides out of the box is just a, a really good fit for what customers need out of a data lake storage provider. And it's really, you know, the simple format. I remember when, when schema on read hit, people were like, oh great, we can just shove all our stuff into a data lake. And then of course the old bromide, it became a data swamp, but the industry has evolved, hasn't it? As new tools, uh, machine intelligence, and AI and machine learning have really helped a lot. Talk about how that's changed from the, the, the old days, if you will, where it was just kind of this, this mess and you really couldn't do much with it. And why today we're able to get so much more out of data lakes? Yeah, I think that you know, original use of data lakes centered a lot around analytics and sort of Hadoop or Spark type applications. And, and that continues to be a big driver but I think that one is that, that we're continuing to expand the kinds of applications, like you mentioned, machine learning or other kinds of intelligence. Are, those applications are, are increasing as things that customers want to do around these shared data sets and being able to pretty easily sort of dynamically combine data sets together and, and use that to drive more insight. I think that you're absolutely right. You know, if you left unstructured or left uh, without any kind of governance, uh, you can quickly develop a lot of um, unusable data. And so I think where we're seeing the evolution is in customers putting more uh, of a governance structure in place around it, really trying to understand and catalog the, the data sets they have. And you know I think that's going to continue. That's something that we're seeing pretty actively develop right now in terms of knowing what data I have, knowing the, the, the kind of the essence of metadata around it and far, as far as how frequently is this data being updated? Um, you know, when is it? When is it updated? What are the rules around when I can access it, and so forth? As well as around data lake access control, making it very easy to grant an end user a specific end user access to certain data sets, knowing that they can then audit and really know exactly who has access to what data in that data lake. So you're seeing a lot of that governance type structure come around while not taking away the, the essence of having a, a simple, low cost, scalable way to, to store and then access data from a number of applications. Uh, so that's all now starting to really come together, I see. I think this is a really important point you're making because I see organizations rethinking their data architecture and their data organizations to really put, put data in the hands of, of the lines of business, those with domain expertise, and self-service is becoming really, really important. I, I see a lot of organizations say, hey, we're going to give the lines of business their own data lakes that they can spin up, but they have to be governed in a federated fashion. I, I, I know yep. you guys use this term lake, lake house. How do these things fit together? Well, Dave, I think you're absolutely right. I think that what a lot of organizations, what I see a lot of organizations doing is evolving to a point where they want as minimal uh, layers between an, someone who owns a business outcome, you know, whether it's a top level revenue generation line or bottom level cost line, they want to connect the people who are in the, you know, closest to the business problem with the applications and the technology that they can use to solve it. And that's a big part of that then is the data and the data sets that are available. So I think w where it ne needs to come together and where it is coming together is around making it very easy to federate, to know what data sources I have, to know what the rules are around accessing it, to remove as much of the friction as we can around you know, just the, the basics of provisioning access, knowing that this set of people is allowed to access it and, and how do they access it, just as, as much as possible removing that so that it's not weeks between when I have an idea and when I can build an application to process that data. Ideally, it's within an hour. You know, I have an idea, I can spin up a notebook, 
I can pull in the data sets I need, you know, train a, an ML algorithm or, or build some analytics function, and then start to see some results and see, is this really working or not? And then of course, you can sort of scale it up from there in a seamless fashion. So I think that a lot of the, the essence of AWS that we've built over the years is really starting to come together and, and where we are continuing to make it simpler for customers is all around that, that federation and, and the simplicity of provisioning access to the data. And, and share that data across a, a massive global network. Kevin Miller, thanks so much for coming yeah. to theCUBE and talking about data lakes. Yeah, thanks for having me, Dave. You're welcome. And thank you for watching. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE.